Beloved, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what please it please you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you know, beloved, I think that culturally and spiritually, we live an alcoholic life. What is an alcoholic life? We are laser focused on persons and things of which we are convinced will fully, fully satisfy us. And so you and I work very hard to achieve or to get those things or those persons. And when we have achieved it, we are on a high. We are ecstatic. We are excited. We are el elated. We're exuberant. Like the temporary nature of alcohol, these things and these persons wear off eventually, and then we feel tired, we feel exhausted, and we have a hangover. <laughs> Beloved, this alcoholic life is manifested in our fearless pursuit of material things, our fearless pursuit of positions in church, at our workplaces, in society, our fearless pursuit of social status, titles, and what you and I perceive as the best school, the best husband, the best wife, and the best house. But when you and I are laser focused on these things and these persons that are like water vapor, appears in, in one second and disappears in another second, it makes us tired, it makes us agitated, it makes us restless. And this was the experience of a mother who shared with me that she worked so hard to prepare her son to pass the equivalent of the C exam in Jamaica and when he eventually got into the ideal, the best Catholic high school in Jamaica, after his experience of that high school, she regretted working so hard to send him there. Not because there was something wrong with the school, but because in high sight, she realized that he was a misfit. That was not the school for him. And she concluded, my focus was on the school and not on my son. I should have worked harder to understand my son and send him to an institution in which he could have flourished. Beloved, today's scripture readings have a response to that alcoholic life that you and I live. And the response comes from the gospel in Jesus' words in which he says to, to all of us, he says to his disciples and to all of us, he says, come to me, all who labor and are, over, 
and I will give you what? Rest. So let us, beloved in Christ, unwrap the gift of today's scripture readings from the book of the prophet Zechariah from Paul's letter to the Romans and the gospel reading to understand this profound message that Jesus has for us today living in the 21st century. The background for the first reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah is the historical period of the post-Babylonian exile. The Persians succeeded the Babylonians as the new superpower at the time. They conquered Babylon and the city of Nineveh, and they liberated the Israelites. So under new political policy, the Persians allowed the Israelites to return home, to rebuild their homeland, to rebuild their lives, and more importantly for them, to rebuild the temple which the Babylonians destroyed. Cyrus, the Persian king, even provided funds to the Israelites to reconstruct the new temple. Hence, we heard in the first reading today, rejoice, heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. So there was a spirit of excitement. There was a spirit of excitement because they were now rebuilding the physical temple. But beloved, they were so laser focused on rebuilding the temple that they neglected to rebuild right and humble relationships with God and with each other. They built relationships of power and not relationship of humility and powerlessness. And so the temple life, this magnificent temple that they had built, the temple life among the priests and the people became the center of power and the center of corruption. Hence, Zechariah's vision of a new Jerusalem, a new type of leadership, in which he says in today's first reading, he will banish chariots and horses from Jerusalem. Chariots and horses are symbol of power. The bow of war will be banished. Your king is triumph, humble, and riding on a donkey. How many of you have ever seen a king riding on a donkey? The donkey is a symbol of powerlessness, a symbol of humility. And so the image of a leader riding on a donkey is a humble leader who, who has a powerless, and humble and right relationship with God and with his people. That's the vision that Zechariah has. A humble, powerless leader who has a right relationship with God and his people. Not the physical temple in its magnificence and glory. In the gospel reading, Jesus teaches his disciples to laser focus on a right and humble relationship with God. So using himself as an example, Jesus says to his disciples, no one knows the son except the father, and no one knows the father except the son. By knowing, beloved, Jesus means not an intellectual knowledge that the Father has of the Son or an intellectual knowledge that the Son has of the Father. By knowing, Jesus means to be in relationship with. And in this relationship, the Son calls the Father Abba, Daddy. And the Father calls the Son Beloved, it's a right relationship. And so the engine driving Jesus' mission is his laser focus on this humble and right relationship with the Father. A relationship that is grounded, a relationship that is driven not by power, but by powerlessness. And so to help his disciples understand this relationship, Jesus, using children as a metaphor 
or for powerlessness. Jesus teaches that it is in powerlessness or in the powerless to which God reveals the mystery of the kingdom of God. Jesus uses the metaphor of children to speak of powerlessness because children in the ancient Middle East had the status of slaves. Children, 60% of them die before their 16th birthday. And during the times of famine, children were the last to be fed. So, like the humble and powerless king riding on a donkey in Zachariah's vision, Jesus reveals the mystery of the kingdom of God to the powerless. Jesus continues. He says, listen, in my words, if you are tired of chasing after things that are like water vapor, this is what you must do. Come to me. Come to me in your powerlessness. Come to me in your nakedness. And I will give you rest. Because my yoke is easy. My burden is light. What is Jesus referring to? Jesus' yoke is light because what Jesus is saying is that he reduces the 613 commandments that the Jews had developed over the centuries. He reduces those 613 commandments some of those commandments include, for example, how many miles you could walk on the Sabbath. And if you, for example, walking on the Sabbath and you, you accomplish the, the miles that is required, say, for example, you are required to walk 10 miles and you go out on a Sabbath and you're walking 10 miles and you, you finish the 10 miles, but at mile 11, there is someone that is sick on the road. You couldn't finish that do the extra mile and help that person. So Jesus is saying, my yoke is easy and my burden is light because the only commandments that I want of you is simply what? Love of God and love of neighbor. Right and humble relationship with God, right and humble relationship with each other a relationship of powerlessness. So beloved, in their powerlessness, from where will disciples receive the power and the strength to carry Jesus' yoke? From where? Paul answers this straight on. Paul says, the Spirit of God has made his home where? in you. What Paul is saying is that only with the help of the Holy Spirit will disciples, will you and I, will be able to have this laser focus on building right and humble relationship with God, right and humble relationship with our neighbor. It's only the Spirit. It was only the Spirit of God, for example, that enabled Maximilian Colby in the powerlessness of being in the concentration camp, that enabled him to give his life, to take the place of a prisoner whose time it was to go into the gas chamber. Only in his powerlessness was he able to do that because of the Spirit because of the Holy Spirit. So beloved, how are you and I being challenged today by these three incredible scripture readings from the prophet Zechariah, Paul's letter to the Romans, and Matthew's gospel? You see, beloved, as Caribbean nations, we have been too laser focused on temporary vapor-like values. Like alcoholics, we have been chasing after 
the so-called powerful American lifestyle and their spirituality. Sadly, the prevailing value systems of our preference for the American lifestyle and value, the prevailing value system is individualism, not the common good. For the American culture, it's the protection of the individual rights. No concern about the common good, or very little concern about the common good, about community. For example, you, we have shifted from the village caring for the child to the electronic gadget, the media and the social me media caring for our children locked away in a room by themselves. Or how many times, beloved in Christ, you and I go to a restaurant and you, have sit you see family members sitting around a table and everybody's on their gadgets. It's individualism that the American culture promotes. We have to be aware of that. We have to be aware what the, the, the values that the powerful gives to us. And what have we been reaping from this value system of individualism is that we have been reaping dysfunctional families and, and, and neighborhoods. We have been reaping neighborhoods plagued by poverty and high crime rate, or neighborhoods that have become like Fort Knox to protect ourselves. We have reaped corruption and waste in both private and public sector. We have reaped indifference towards the weak and the vulnerable, especially the elderly in our society. And we've also reaped what is called the gospel of prosperity, which teaches that if you are good to the Lord, then God will bless you with material things. In addition, beloved, and I, we, you, you and I need to be conscious and aware, the powerful culture is also chasing after us and inflicting their powerful ideology and spirituality. For example, their ideology surrounding sexuality or gender or reproductive health. Beloved, we are so laser focused on the powerful and the values of the powerful for our answers. Yet Jesus tells us this, the mysteries of the kingdom of God is revealed to the powerless. Beloved, today's scripture readings challenge us to stop chasing after vapor-like value systems of the powerful. Instead, Jesus says, come to me. Where can we find Jesus? We find Jesus in the powerless. We find Jesus in the weak. We find Jesus in the vulnerable, right here in the Caribbean. Pay attention, beloved in Christ, to where Pope Francis, for example, does his pastoral visits. And even when he goes to the powerful nations, he ensures that in the midst of those powerful nations, he goes to those who are powerless. Because that's where you're going to find Jesus. Jesus says, I reveal the mysteries of the kingdom of God to children. It is... In finding Jesus, it's going to where Jesus is, that Jesus says, you will find me. You will find eternal life. You will find abundant life. You will find rest. It is in Jesus, beloved, the powerless one, the humble one, the one who is humble at heart, in heart, and not the powerful not the powerful countries, not the powerful titles, not the powerful status, not the powerful buildings and institutions, not the powerful material things. 
It is in Jesus the powerless that you will find rest. Beloved, let us learn from the weakness of St. Augustine of Hippo, the North African saint, who chased after many temporary things, wealth, women, sex, religion, alcohol, and this made him tired. It made him tired. And it is only in Augustine's powerlessness while walking through the forest and he stumbled over the body of a, decomp a, de a decomposed body and realized it was a body of someone he knew. In that powerlessness, Augustine woke up and realized that he was a restless young man. And that is why he writes in his, in his book, Lord, I am restless until I find rest in, in you. Beloved, let us stop chasing after the values of the powerful and turn to Jesus, the powerless one who lives in the powerless, for it is in him who is powerless and humble in heart that you and I will find rest. Rest, rest, rest. Amen.